Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel where Shimano have responded to my recent review of their latest power meter firmware where things weren't good and their customer service has proven to be even worse. All right, so after my comprehensive testing and review of firmware version 4.2.0 for the R8100P 12 speed power meter, which was put through all the same tests and protocols as every other power meter that I get, the results weren't great. In fact, it wasn't within what I would consider an acceptable accuracy range of plus or minus 2% of the load being placed on that power meter. It's not a power meter that I can trust, and it's definitely not a power meter that I can use to verify and test other power meters against. So I submitted my support query through to Shimano Australia, asking for their response. It's clear there was a problem with the meter, and their response means I now have two problems with Shimano, both the hardware and their customer service. So my query was as follows. Purchased 30th of the 10th, 2023 from ckh.cc here in Australia, retail channel. The meter was installed and updated to firmware version 4.2.0. The accuracy of the meter isn't within plus or minus 2% spec. I fully documented this over on YouTube. Question being is, is this something for Shimano headquarters, Shimano Global, Shimano Australia, or CK? That was posted to them on November the 8th. On November the 13th, they responded from the Shimano Australia marketing email account that Shimano guarantees the accuracy of the FCR8100P to be within plus or minus 2% of the rated load under the original calibration conditions prior to shipment. There are no guaranteed values compared to other power meters made by other manufacturers. They also provided two links, just cut and paste from their FAQ, about their power meter calibration and also six reasons why power values can differ from those of third party power meters. And that's it. Note my original question was not answered. I've replied to that within a few minutes because I want to get this resolved, stating that I strongly believe with the comprehensive testing I have performed that the unit that I have is not within the stated specifications and requires further attention. Please advise if there is to be no further action on this from Shimano and I'll take this up with a retailer. In other words, if Shimano just want to wipe their hands clean of this one and forget about it, I'll return the unit and that will be that. That was early on on the 13th, it's now the 17th past 5pm, so that's five business days. I'm still waiting for an answer to that simple question. They are clearly dodging this one. So let's dig into their reply a little bit deeper and why it's not a really good look for Shimano at all. So the statement here that Shimano guarantees the accuracy of the FCR8100P to be within plus or minus 2% of the rated load under the original calibration conditions prior to shipment. Okay, fine. However, firmware version 4.2.0 changes that accuracy in validating this claim. They cannot guarantee the accuracy of a power meter when installed with the latest firmware changes that accuracy. Secondly, if that's their final answer to a meter which clearly isn't reading within plus or minus 2% of what I would consider an accurate load being placed on it, then do they ever need to lift a finger when the meter reads 50% high or 50% low or simply doesn't work at all? What qualifies as a problem big enough for them to action a warranty claim on their power meter. I find it hard to believe their customer service policy is to hide behind a blanket statement of cell certification and verification that cannot be questioned, especially when the evidence presented to them clearly indicates there's a problem with the unit that I have. Going a little harder on that self-certification claim that can't be questioned or validated, where does that leave any scientific studies that have used this power meter for their results? If their power meter obviously can't be compared or verified against any other sources, it can't be trusted. And where does that leave the world tour teams who are mostly on this power meter? Yes, it's a sponsorship thing. Are their numbers also junk? It's highly likely. So onto their claims that there are no guaranteed values compared to other power meters made by other manufacturers. In a nutshell, you can't compare us to others. Now, regardless of them self-certifying and guaranteeing their accuracy and calibration, they choose to measure torque and cadence and output watts. Now, they're not measuring their output in their own proprietary value of shamanis or shonk watts, although that could be questioned. They're using watts, just like meters, grams, and time, units we all agree can be compared regardless of exactly how they're measured, they're using watts listed here in the International System of Units. Right, further onto their reply. There are several types of power meters such as crank-based, pedal-based, hub-based power meters. Differences in power values may occur due to the following factors. There are six, let's go. The position of the measurement sensor. Absolutely, that is a factor of power meter accuracy. And the position of their right side strain gauges isn't great. The left side, however, is fine. Remembering the Shimano power meter is two power meters that do combine to give you one figure, but we can split those out. So the left meter works fine. 
the right doesn't. So I do agree with him here. The position of the measurement sensor is a factor. Altering calculation and calibration methods. A little bit of an ambiguous line there about exactly what they mean, but regardless, if you're using two or more power meters, the results should trend or converge towards the true output that you are doing, which in the tests that I had at least three power meters or more indicated was happening, and where the left side of their power meter was also trending towards that true output. It was the right side that had problems. So while this line, I guess, is defending their meter against other manufacturers, when comparing this unit to itself, both left and right, there are differences between the two sides. I guess they could argue that there are altering calculation and calibration methods on their left and their right, but the right isn't correct. The difference in chain drive efficiency between the rear and the front. Drivetrain losses. Accepted. Except there's no drivetrain between pedal and crank arm, and I tested two pedal sets against their crank arm meters. So that one off the table. The next excuse here why power meters might not match is the difference due to the method, magnet or accelerometer used to measure cadence. And this is true, incorrect cadence will give you incorrect power output. However, in my testing, the cadence is fine. In fact, it was more than fine. It was as close as perfect as you could get from three power sources. So that's off the table. The difference in cadence log data due to the differences in the communication protocol between ELE and Ant, Bluetooth and Ant. Accepted, but I was using Ant Plus for all of my testing. So that's off the table. And finally, the difference in calculation of received values by third party head unit. Same power meter data can result is slightly different values on different head units. Um, looks like a typo on their website, they've cut and paste. Uh, yeah, look, if you've seen any of my deep dives into any other of my videos, I bring this up quite often. Different manufacturer head units recording even the same power meter can result in different averages and normalized power values. Comparing steady state between those two is okay, but it's that start and stop that can skew the numbers just a little bit. So it's a valid claim. However, this is why I use all Garmin Edge head units and all on the same or equivalent firmware. And this doesn't explain why left is fine, right is not. So look, for a first level support desk reply to my query, I guess what they sent through is a good starting point. Now my frustration here isn't with who replied, it's with the company policy of what they replied with and the lack of follow up. Now I'm 16 years deep into diagnosing power meter issues. No, really, my first power tap was a total pain in the ass. That thing didn't work when the temperature dropped below 16 degrees Celsius and required quite a bit of debug to figure out what was going on. So at this point in time, I'd say Shimano either don't want to deal with the issue or don't know how to deal with this issue. But what is crystal clear is they did not give my review and results any attention whatsoever. And that really isn't a good look on two fronts now, both the hardware I'm holding and the customer service I've received. Now I'm not expecting any special treatment here whatsoever. I purchased this through a retail channel, I raised a standard support ticket, and the level of customer service I've got is what I would consider, and I assume what most people at Shimano would also consider, below standards. So my final question is, why are Shimano so against making a better product? Now I'm not being hard on them for no reason at all. Look, I buy their equipment, I ride their equipment, I love most of their group sets. In fact, this is why I'm focusing so hard and have for years on their power meter. I want them to solve this problem and to match the quality of their group sets. But speaking of the quality of this power meter, here's a close up of the chain rings on the R8100P. They don't even line up with a crank arm. So in short, this power meter had issues. They acknowledged that, they attempted to fix it, it didn't work, and here we are. They don't wanna deal with it. Now I don't think this will be the last video I do on this power meter, so stay tuned. Happy Friday.